Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Danny Goodman, and over there we have John Lewandowski. Hey. Hi, John. It's another one of them videos, huh? Yeah. Our sponsor is brought to you by wonderful folks at Hockey Lodge, which are the two West Side of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414 800 <sighs> I don't even know where to start with this one. So I'm just gonna start in the most simple of places, stats. Stats were Rangers 30 to Preds 29. Yeah, okay. Preds have 55 to 45 face off. Eh. Both teams were 0 for on the power play. Rangers 0 for 4, Preds 0 for, 0 for 3. Uh, hits were 15 to 10 for the Rangers. Blocks were 10 to 4 for the Rangers. Giveaways were 12 to 7. Preds. All righty. Let's just get into this right away. Scoring in the first period, two minutes, 12 seconds in, was Philip Heedle. 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 I think it's Heedle. The C is silent. Heedle. Oh, uh, with an assist from Sammy Blas and Alexei Lafreniere, former first first overall pick. Um, then in the second period, scoring his first professional NHL goal, Philip Tomasino with his first with an assist from Ryan Johansson, his second, and Dante Fabro, his first at the 701 mark of the second. Pretty much stayed that way for a while. But there yeah. is some things I'm going to talk to you about after this goal. Because before I get into the next one after this one, I've got some things to say. Alexi Lafreniere scored in the third period with a second of the season with an assist from Sammy Blyas and uh, Norris Trophy winning Adam Fox with his third assist of the season. Um, before I even get too far into this, I'm going to say this now. I am a Preds fan probably to the day I die. Barring no change in system. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I probably always have love for the Preds, but I'm a Preds fan probably to the day I die. And one of the things I'm going to say right now is this is the worst I've seen them start in a long time. All right, two things. One, when you pull your goalie and you know the other team just iced the puck and you know that they're tired, but your guys are tired and the ref has this on the Rangers side, which means no change and pointing to you with open hand, meaning you can change. You make the changes that are necessary for your team to be successful. If there's a couple guys who are tired, yet you, you know, you let them breathe for a few seconds and you take the face off. If the puck comes out of the zone, you make the change. You at least let them breathe. Right. You do not call timeout <laughs> letting both teams breathe. Right. Enough said there. Second of all, Pulling Saros with almost three minutes left. Y'all are going to get me yelled at for smoking on a show because I need a smoke right now watching this team. Talking about it makes me want to smoke. All righty. Beyond that, then unassisted in the third at the 1954 mark, Barclay Goudreau, first goal of the season. Preds lose three to three to one. As far as I'm concerned, the only guys to show up tonight were Tomasino and our goaltender. Goaltender for the Rangers was Igor Shistorkin. Uh, he stepped 28 to 29 with a 0.966 save percentage. Played very well. He played very, very well. There were some of those that I don't think should have gone in, but they or right. they didn't. 
Um, in that for Nashville was Saros stopping 27 of 29 with a 0.931 save percentage. He did very well as well. I think his team let him down. That's my opinion. right. I'm sticking with it. You can't, he can't stop everything, and you can't win a game when a team out shoots and outscores you, out hustles you, and outsmarts you every step of the way. Right. When it's outsmarting you, that falls on the coach. When a team's out hustling you, that falls on the team. And when a team's outsmarting you and out hustling you, that's definitely the coach because you're not putting the effort in. If you're not putting the effort in and you're not, you know, driving, hey guys, we got to have more effort. Hey guys, we got to have more effort. Hey guys, you got to pick it up a little bit. But what effort can guys have? If you're breaking up the lines constantly. Right. The lines since game one to now have not been the same. Right. Every game played. No consistency. No, not not really. And when you don't see consistency, where are you gonna? How are you gonna expect consistency on the ice? Right. You know, you got to give line. Oh, that didn't work. So we're gonna change the lines again, which is probably what he's gonna do for the next game against the Jets, where we're gonna get slaughtered. Because personally, I sit Saros the next game. And I say, and, and as much as I hate for this to happen to Ingram or Riddich or whoever ends up playing that game, if you're going to sit there and tell me that the next game, that goalie that we put in, just say the players pull him aside and go let every shot in. Don't even try. I have no faith in our coaching system. I can't drink liquor on the show, so Dr. Pepper's going to have to be about as close as I can get. <laughs> oh. My humble and personal opinion, what's the point of trading for Philip Myers if you're not going to play? Right. This Ellis trade's looking like a bust. Because the coach isn't playing the guys you're giving him. He's playing them over guys like Benning and Barveski, who are a minus seven on the season. Let's see, Barveski, Benning. We know Carrier and Fabro aren't coming out of the lineup, so. All right, let's see. Barveski's a minus one. Benning is a minus one. After tonight, they're a minus two apiece. I don't see it working. My own opinion. Um, beyond that, uh at home's a minus two. You can't really blame him when you're stuck out there for 23 minutes. Alice was out there. Alice, Alice, Yossi was out there for 28 minutes. When Boraveski and Benning are playing 10 minutes and 13 minutes, and they're minus ones, Terry is a minus one. Fabro is a plus one. That's a bad day for your team when Fabro is a plus. And the rest of your team has minus. You take trending off the herd line and expect the same consistency. That was the most consistent line you had. Yeah. And you broke it up. How'd that go for you? You got out hit, outsmarted, out hustled, and outplayed because you didn't have consistency. Out blocked, too. Yeah. This team, and I'm going to say this, this goes for almost any team, but this team 
is not going to sit here and put up with this for the rest of the year. No. The fans will not put up with this for the rest of the year. You will have an empty arena by the end of the year. And oh my God, Arizona is getting slaughtered. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I happen to look up at the sports ticker. <laughs> it is in the second period, three to nothing, Edmonton. <sighs> McDavid and Dryside will add it again, huh? Most likely. Um, your referees for today were Eric Ferlot and Brad Meyer. Linesmen were Jonathan Delchamps and Brian Ponchich. Head coach for the Rangers is Gerald Gallant. Head coach for Nashville is John Hines, a.k.a. Lord Baltimore. Yes, I said it. If you want, go cross, cross like split screen. Look at a photo of John Hines. Look at a photo of Lord Baltimore from Harry Potter. It's kind of scary, the resemblance. I do it in all joking manner, by the way, because if you can't make fun of your own team, don't get mad when other people make fun of them. Because that's just the way it should be. If you can't be critical of your team, don't be critical of other people's team. All right. That's what we do here. We're critical of our team because we expect better. All right. We do. Call John Hines, Lord Voldemort, because lately he's on a power trip. I'm right, you're wrong. You know, I almost had to go with the, uh, what is that? Uh, oh, God, uh, the, the principal from Matilda. Oh, Miss mm-hmm. Trunchbull. I'm big and you're small. Huh? You're right. I'm right and you're wrong. You know? All right. It, it, it's it's just that you know and it, and it pains me to look at the scratches so i'm going to get into it scratches for new the new york rangers jared tenardi jillian gunther libor hajik hajka hajik hajka i don't know how to say that i'm just gonna wing it uh nashville ben harper rocco grimaldi phil meyer grimaldi played great in the last game in you bet you you're right he played great against LA and you bench him. <laughs> Personally, if I'm taking somebody out of the lineup next game, it is Cousins. Novak sent him back down. Yeah, he did a lot better in the faceoff, 71% today. Yeah. NHL game. Tomasino scores his first NHL goal in his second professional game, also went 75% on the faceoff. So some of the young guys are performing. Right. Cousins. Um, Duchesne's looking good. Johansson's looking good. They're trying. It's not going in, but at least I'm seeing the effort. Right. I am actually okay. seeing the effort. In, in the case of Cousins, I'm not. No. In the case of Conan, I'm not. No. Now, I did see him get a little riled today, which was good to see. But I think, yeah. I really do think the only people showing up every game are, is Soros. only person showing up every game is Soros. This man could lose every game like this the rest of the season and probably win the dang Vesna with the stats he has. Probably. Because he's not allowing over three by himself. He's got help. Right. Because the coach keeps pulling him. And then, oh, well, here's a, you know, it's a 2-1 game. We'll pull the goalie. Uh, did we get scored on? Yeah. Oops. Okay. Game over. You know? Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't want to be the one to say this, but we gave Seattle their first win. Yeah. The teams we've lost to so far, standings wise, Rangers, they're now three and one, three, one and one. Lost to Carolina, they're three and oh. Let's see. If I remember correctly. 
One against LA. Lost against Seattle. Yeah. So we are three and one. Seattle's only win comes from us. We keep losing the way we're losing. The only teams without a win this year, Montreal, Chicago Blackhawks, Arizona Coyotes. Now, as much as us Preds fans can sit back and go, ha, at least we have one win, well, yeah. And, and it is kind of funny, because no matter what happens, Chicago traded two first-round picks for Seth Jones. Which means that if they finish dead last in the league and pick number one overall, Columbus has their pick. And if Columbus stays on the pace that they're at, they're going to make the playoffs. All right. <laughs> Tell me how that works. Mm -hmm. It's like the San Jose effect. Um, uh, San Jose traded for, um, uh, uh, what is that, uh, Eric Carlson. Traded away two first round picks for the defenseman. When they did that, um, Ottawa ended up turning it around and making the playoffs. And um, San Jose missed the playoffs two years in a row. Right. And that gave Ottawa like three, what was it, two top 10 picks. One year, two top 10 picks the next year. I mean, Ottawa's going to be good because they're going to have the, they have the edge as far as picks go. Um, you know, and, and the league's yeah. changed. So understand this, Nashville, you're going to have to rebuild. Yeah, but, it's safe to say at this point that we're looking for, at a rebuild. Yeah, it's not even a competitive rebuild. It's just a rebuild. You could hold this team, hope to hold this team together with Ekholm and Saros and all them. Yeah, you're going to be able to get back to the playoffs pretty quickly if you hold the team together. Right. But that's the problem. Right now, looking at it, only trade piece we have is Forsberg. Unless we want to give up guys with years on their contract. Right. And that's part of the problem. You know? Yeah. Uh, Coyle expects us to come out of it and go back at it and, and, and go swinging into the into the second half of the season. But you, we can't keep doing that because by the time we get to the playoffs, we're tired. Right. We're exhausted. I'm exhausted talking about being exhausted. I mean, it's frustrating to the point where I'm looking at this team and I go, I really didn't have high hopes going into the year. Now with Hines as coach, because I don't have faith in him. And pretty soon, neither will the guys. And personally, you hire Hines over Gallant. The guy Seattle hired three other one, three other potential coaches, Carl Taylor, who's doing nothing at the time, but winning. I mean, as much as it would pain me as an Admirals fan to see Carl Taylor go up, it's what we do here. Right. It is. There's nothing more than putting it, nothing more puts a smile on our face than seeing our guys in the NHL. Because right. guess what? That means we're doing our job. Yeah. And if they stay, like guys like Suter, Pecorine, Shea Weber, just to name a handful, that will be going into the Hockey Hall of Fame that developed right here in Milwaukee. Right. Those three are going to go into the Hall of Fame. Cup or no cup, though, they're going in. May not first ballot, but they're going in. 
Pekka in particular, because, I mean, top 20 goalie. There are goalies in the top 30 that are in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Mika Kippershoff is in, and Pekka beat his stats by about six years. Finished with a better goals against average, finished with more wins, finished with more um, playoff wins, finished yeah. 19th overall. You're, you're going to go in. But that's just the thing. We do that here. We develop NHLers. Right. Florida develops AHLers. We develop NHLers. So we're supposed to turn Florida's players that they send us when we call guys up into what you want in Nashville. Right. So that's our job. Their job in Florida is to create pro hockey players. Get them ready for the pro game. Give them a little yeah. bit of responsibility, some experience on the ice. That's kind of stuff. Then you get into some of the other stuff, and it's just in the AHL, you learn how to be a pro. You got to do something. Right. You got to play almost every day. You practice every day. You have media that is a pain in the neck. <laughs> um, who will tell you what they think of you, whether they, whether you like it or not? Like I stand, still stand by, sometimes barking at Carrier, barked at Tolvin, and I expected better. What happened when I started doing those things? They started doing better. Not that I'm going to give myself a pat on the back here, but I'm just saying. Media holds a heavy presence in sports. If yeah. you can't handle it, you're going to be in deep crap. Yeah. Or as they say, what's that? Up shit's creek without a paddle? Uh, mm. Preparing the pun there. That would be the uh, saying. But, you know, as, as all of the things go on, uh, um, I, I really do think that, you know, this is something's got to change. And yeah, that, for sure. I also think that whoever, matter of fact, I'm going to look this up because whoever the Preds special teams coach is needs to be fired ASAP. Because going all for four on the power play on a consistent basis is not good. Aha, there we go. Coaching staff. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. All right. Staff list. NHL.com, Nashville Predators. Oh, let's see what we got here. Eh, I don't need owners or executives. Oh, wait. Exec CEO and alternative governor, Sean Henry. Okay. At least I know who's going to be calling the shots from above there. Jeff Keatley, you've been horrible over time. Aha! Power play coach Dan Lambert. Uh, have you people updated this at all? Like the trainers? Um, no, they have not. Eek. All righty. So, if I were to call shots on head coaching, 
Okay. Okay. Two of the things that would pop into mind. One, Todd Richards, if you're going to hire from within or do an interim coach, which I would think would be probably the best option at this point. Yeah, I do too. Because even if anything you want, say you do want Carl Taylor, right? Unless somebody else is going to pull the trigger on that one. And you go, no, 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 no. I'll offer him this. You know? Right. I'll offer him a little more money to come to Nashville. Yeah. yeah. A little bit more. Just a little. And then start the bidding war. But then when you get into all of this and you look at it, it is really, really complicated because Dan Hino, as much as we all you know, watched him with the Avalanche, is not ready for a head coaching position. Dan Lambert couldn't coach a power play out of a wet paper bag because you hired a college coach to coach an NHL power play. Thank you, John Hines. The only credible coach that Nashville has is Todd Richards. And, and I'm not taking away from Dan Hino, but he's young as far as coaching standards. All right. I think he's done a good job. I just think I agree. He's a little too young to, if they were to hire within take over. And that's the other question we ask ourselves about Carl Taylor, because he has the same factor. Right. But at the other side, he does have the resume behind him to back it up. He went right, he from, does. AHL, uh, from college level to the AHL, coached with Dallas as an assistant coach. They won there, came here, wins here, came, goes to Chicago during the lockout year. They win there, comes back here. We win our opener. So winning is a thing that he coaches. Right. It's a part of the system. And his biggest thing is dictate the tempo. You do. Right. We dictate the tempo. Every game, home or on the road. Right. And, and, and I think that is the hardest part because I don't see them dictating the tempo in Nashville. No, I don't either. And I think that that, that is something I'd want in my locker room. His, right. His account, Paul Taylor to go. We got to go out there tonight and dictate the tempo. If you don't, have fun in Milwaukee. I think that's lit. Like, there's two sides to this coin. You can also be John Hines and go, if we don't come out with energy against Winnipeg on Saturday, speaking of which, Saturday, we will be live right here. Yeah. It'll be a long night of us going like this between three screens. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you know, first but, triple of the year. Yeah, first triple of the year. So please bear with us, folks. It's going to be a giant monster show. <laughs> As we put it, the last one, every triple we do, we're going to be doing all three in one video because the start stop is yeah, if we're being live. Right. So for those of you watching, um, if you watch our triples, please stay with us the whole show. If we're not talking about your team and you pop in, we will get to them. Right, we will. But don't care for the Predators, but we do the Preds game first. Admirals are normally going to be next, followed by the right. Everboys. We go if by. You have, well, go I ahead. was just going to say, if you have a creative or clever name for our massive show, let us know. We're brainstorming right now. Yeah, we don't have a name for it either. <laughs> like, we still don't have a name for our In the System video either. Right. <laughs> we just call it, uh, was it Nashville Predators System? Eek. How generic. So if you guys have ideas, please help us brainstorm. Um, like I said, we work pretty much every day, all day, but lately it's been kind of quiet, which we like because that gives us time to binge watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> or in my case, game. Right. John's case, binge watch TV. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I binge play NHL 22. For those of you that are NHL 22 gamers, hit, hit, hit our inbox. 
Mm -hmm. um, PS4 only because they don't have crossplay yet. <laughs> they need crossplay because their game, their their gaming group is insane. Like there are very few people that play online right now. But other than that, this has been a fun one. Very yep. informational for you folks. Yep. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Hockey Locker. 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, right across the street from Wilson Park. Call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeywalkermilwaukee.com. Thank you for watching.